Danny. Right? Right? Um, I usually don't need a microphone, but if you can hear me, just let me know. Um, Danny, I'm going to keep it nice and short and sweet. Thank you. There are a lot of things about Amy that nobody knows that you won't find on her Facebook page or her palm card. And I'm sure she's not going to talk a lot about them today. She has no idea what I'm going to say. No. So I'm gonna, I am going to keep it very short. Um, Amy is probably one of the most amazing people I have ever met. I know I'm biased, but I'm going to tell you why. Uh, she... She's done a lot of work that nobody really knows about. It doesn't appear on, you know, all of her everyday material. She is a staunch supporter of the LGBTQ community. She facilitated the first foster parent, LGBTQ foster parent adoption um, in the county that she worked for when she was working in human services. Um, she was also one of the first safe space liaisons there. She also worked a lot with seniors, and she started out as a volunteer. She volunteered with the senior population doing aqua aerobics and yoga with them, and then eventually was hired on as an employee because they liked her so much. She, we debate about this all the time, and I'm going to tell everybody anyway. She's okay. actually a walking miracle also, so. <laughs> Back in high school, not a lot of people know this, but Amy was in a terrible automobile accident, was never supposed to walk again, was in a coma, and she's the type of person who woke up from her coma and knew that she wanted to live, and she has been playing contact sports ever since, so she's, she's a pretty amazing human. Um, she definitely knows how to persevere, and it's my absolute pleasure to introduce the most beautiful soul I know, and the next Lehigh County Commissioner for District 3, so please. I'll do my best. Now that you know a little bit about me, for those that don't know, I'll tell you a little bit about what the county commissioner does and what makes me the best choice. I like to think of it as a big table, because if you watch us, that's what we do. We sit around at a big table, right? Who knows? And there's nine of us, and we talk about all kinds of things for lots and lots and lots of time. And we talk about what direction the county is going to go, where we plan it, our open spaces, how to responsibly build our infrastructure and grow economically while we preserve and protect our open spaces and farmland. We deal with pension contributions, retiree health care, veterans benefits. All these things boil down to what we do on a daily basis. But then we also have our bigger ticket items like Cedarbrook Nursing Home, very highly rated, houses the seniors that built this county. And we also have our courts, our cops, and our corrections facilities. Human services and criminal justice make up 70% of our budget here at the county level. And that makes up 100% of my past career experience. Now, while that's not just something that I bring to the table, it's not the only thing that I bring to the table. The other thing that's important to remember, like I said before, is that there are nine commissioners, right? Four of them are at large, and five of them, my position included, is really what I consider an advocacy position for the district you represent. And if you want your commissioner to be able to do what you want, to be effective in that position, well, they need to be an advocate. And I, my entire life, have been a professional advocate, whether it was for abused children, for seniors' needs. Everything I've ever done has boiled down to perseverance and advocacy. And that's something that sets me apart in this race, because you have to remember, if your commissioner can't advocate for you, they're not going to do you any good. Four other people have to sit there and agree that your commissioner has the right ideas. And that's something I want everyone to remember in May. <coughs> now, we've established I'm an advocate. What do I want to advocate for? First things first, I'll talk about Cedarbrook. We all know Cedarbrook presents some challenges, both economically and structurally, to the county. But like I said before, these are the men and women that literally built 
the buildings we live in, the streets we drive on. And I believe that we have a responsibility as a county to take care of those individuals and make prudent decisions that protect both their care options and their quality of life going forward. Beyond that, another challenge that we face, very unfortunately, is opiate addiction here in Lehigh County. It's not just an inner city problem. It is something that touches nearly every single family. And it's not getting any better. 30% of all inmates to our corrections facility report substance abuse issues. 20% of them require detox when they walk in. And if you didn't know, the minute those people walk into our corrections doors, we pay the cost for their health care. We pay the cost for their detox. But we need to do better because what's happening is that we have these individuals, right, that are suffering, that need help, and they need care. So we bring them in, they serve their time, they get the care they need, they get clean. But then what happens? We put them back out onto the same streets with the same friends and the same habits. But somehow we expect different results. From my work in inner cities and substance abuse, I can tell you that not only do we have to do better, but we can. Tom Muller will be the first one here to tell you that there's about 200, two, excuse me, two million dollars of grant money right sitting there doing nothing for us, slotted for human services. That's something that I would like to utilize. I would like to spearhead a project to put in a recovery clubhouse so that when people are suffering and exit our correctional facility clean, they have a place to go. Because I know some people will sit there and say, oh, but we have AA, oh, but we have our meetings. But the urge to use isn't convenient. And it doesn't happen ooh, five minutes before our regularly scheduled meeting. It happens at inconvenient times and inconvenient places. And every single person needs something different. So if we can provide a place for people to go, whether it's to sit with someone and talk out that urge, or whether it's to just keep their hands busy and shoot a game of pool for 20 minutes. Doing just that could significantly reduce the money we have to spend on criminal justice and corrections. 70% of our budget. And if we reduce that money, we'll have more money to spend to restore the 15 parks that we care for, or help restore our 43 bridges. And I think we'd all rather spend money there. But that all boils down to my last thing that I'm going to talk about before I uh, let us all finish eating and uh, our dancer comes back out. Is trickle up economics. Another thing I've learned through my career is that when we help the most vulnerable amongst us, it benefits us all. And while it's not the county's responsibility to create jobs, it is the county's responsibility to create an environment where job growth is encouraged and sustainable, where workers' rights are protected, and collective bargaining is respected. Because I feel the way that we make the middle class great again is through organized labor and protecting working families' rights. So that's me in a nutshell, and thank you for letting me speak. I am touched to look around and see how full this room is, because as most all of you know, I'm not a career politician. This wasn't even a flitter in my eye a year ago, but due to the work of volunteers and beautiful people like my wife and Lynn and the Braces, everyone who's come and, and met me and talked with me, we've made a completely volunteer-based campaign that was born out of career, excuse me, community activism. And it's just so refreshing to see so much support here. So I thank you all for that. that everyone supports me and I'm so thankful that you've all helped get me right here to this spot right now. But our job isn't done because I can't do any of the things that I want to do unless I get there. So thank you all for opening your hearts to me. 
but I'm kind of going to need you to open your contacts list and your checkbooks <laughs> to help me get there so that we can get District 3 the advocate that they deserve. Thank you so much. <laughs>